The Christmas story is rooted in some ways to the old, old tales of the winter solstice. In ancient times in Europe, when the solstice came, our distant ancestors sometimes told stories of a miraculous child born to return us to the light. Throughout the world, people tell stories of a child born to a royal family or to an important and rich family, a child who would grow up to lead humankind into a time of truth and justice. The early followers of Jesus adapted those stories of miraculous births and connected them to the stories of their teacher. But they added a surprising twist to those old stories. Their miraculous child was not the son of a king, but instead the son of a carpenter, a woodworker. He wasn't the son of a wealthy queen, but instead the son of a woman who was poor. And those stories have been told and retold countless times since the early Christians first began telling them 18 or 1900 years ago. We are going to recreate the old story of this particular miraculous birth this evening, but we are going to tell it in a new way. Since we can't all be together here tonight in person, we're going to tell the story with stuffed animals from members and friends of the congregation. Maybe you'll see one of your stuffed animals here. And we're going to offer our own special take on this story. We'll draw on two early Christian accounts of Jesus's birth from the books of Matthew and Luke. We offer this story as a story of freedom and liberation and hope for all people. And by all, we mean all. Black, brown, and indigenous lives that matter. People whose gender, identity, and expression, and sexual orientation is perfect exactly the way it is. People of all abilities, nationalities, and religious affiliations. This is a story of hope for all people. As we hear the story, we invite you to notice the struggle and the suffering of a family displaced by the king's greed and then by his fear. Try to forget that you've ever heard this story before, even though you may recognize the familiar characters, even though you may remember the familiar plot. Try to hear this story as if this is the first time you've heard it. I know since we are including teddy bears and other stuffed animals tonight, it's bound to feel a little different, even if you've heard this story many times before. Ready? Then let's begin. If you wish, Close your eyes for a moment. Transport yourself to another time and another place. Imagine that a story is going to unfold before your very eyes, a brand new story you've never, ever heard before. Imagine that after years and years of hearing stories about women and men bowing down before powerful kings and emperors and dictators and tyrants, you finally hear a story in which three powerful wise people kneel down alongside some shepherds before one tiny newborn child. Imagine that after years of hearing story after story telling of terrible wars, you are at last hearing the friendly story of a baby the story of a humble carpenter and his wife, the baby that is born to them in a stable, shepherds in a starlit field who go to see the newborn child, and peaceful animals who gather round in the stable where the baby lies in the cow's feeding trough. Imagine that at last you are going to hear a story in which everyone is longing for peace on earth and goodwill to all persons everywhere. 
Imagine that after years of hearing stories about the results of hatred and oppression and persecutions, you finally are hearing a story about the transforming power of love. If you are ready, slowly open your eyes, listen and watch carefully. Let the story begin. In those days, long, long ago, a decree went out from the emperor, Caesar Augustus, saying, all of the world should be registered so they can pay taxes to me. All the people were required to go to the town where they had been born in order to register. For some people, that meant a long journey. Joseph, a carpenter, had to go all the way from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the city of David. He went with Mary, the woman he was planning to marry, because she was expecting a child. They started on their long journey, traveling by day and sometimes even by night, their road lit only by stars. Joseph and Mary knew it was not going to be easy, what with Mary almost ready to have her baby. At least they had a donkey that Mary could ride on, and at least the twinkling stars made the road seem friendly. When Joseph and Mary got to Bethlehem, they discovered that there was no room at the hotel. Well, the story calls it an inn. The inn was the only place in town with comfortable beds, but the only place Mary and Joseph could find to take shelter was in a stable, an animal shelter, a cave cut into the side of a hill. So they settled in to sleep there among the animals. The gentle animals welcomed Joseph and Mary into their stable, and that very night, the time came for Mary to have her baby. It was a stable, an animal shelter, so when the baby was born, of course there was no cradle or crib for Mary to lay her baby in. But one of the cows was kind enough to lend her feeding trough for a cradle. And Joseph and Mary laid their new baby there amidst the hay in the feeding trough. In that area, there were shepherds who lived for months at a time out in the fields, watching over their flocks of sheep by night. They had to watch over their sheep because there were wolves in the hills that would gladly eat a sheep if they could get one. On this night, as the shepherds stood watch in their fields, an angel suddenly stood before them. And this angel was truly magnificent. 
and the glory of everything that is holy shone around the shepherds. Not surprisingly, the shepherds were terrified. They were scared. But the angel spoke gently, saying to them, Do not be afraid, for I have appeared to bring you good news of great joy for all the people of Israel. To you is born this day in the city of David a very special baby, a savior to lead people to freedom. This will be the sign that you've found the right place. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth, lying in a cow's feeding trough. There's a star in the east on Christmas morn. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. It will lead to the place where the babe is born. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Leave your ewes and leave your lambs. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Leave your sheep and leave your rams. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Follow, follow. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Then the angel who had spoken went on to say, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth let there be peace and goodwill among all people everywhere. And there was a whole host of angels singing and rejoicing, and the shepherds were amazed. we have heard on high sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply echoing their joyous strings Gloria in excelsis Deo When they heard the message and heard the songs of the angel choir, the shepherds said to one another, This is amazing! Let's go up to Bethlehem and actually see the baby the first angel told us about. Being good shepherds who cared about their sheep, they brought the sheep along. So the shepherds went to Bethlehem with their sheep, and there they found Mary and Joseph and the new baby, just as that angel had told them. Afterwards, the shepherds would tell everyone what the angel had said to them about Mary and Joseph's new baby, and everyone who heard their story was amazed.
As for Mary, she already knew her baby was wonderful, but she listened carefully to what the shepherd said and treasured all she heard in her heart. The shepherds and sheep gathered around the feeding trough, admiring the baby. They sang songs of praise for this wonder of new birth, and they hoped that what the angels said would come true, that there would be peace on earth and goodwill for all people, even for lowly shepherds. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, three wise persons, who were like royalty, like kings and queens, came to Jerusalem from the far away east. As these three wise persons traveled their long, slow journey to Bethlehem, actually, the stories say it took them 12 days to get there, which is why we talk about the 12 days of Christmas, they noticed that their way was lit by a large and bright star in the sky. First, the wise persons went to visit King Herod, and these wise persons asked King Herod, Where is this very special child who has been born? For we have seen a very special star in the eastern skies, and we have come to praise him and bring gifts. The three wise persons learned from King Herod about a prophecy which had been spoken long ago, that this very special child would be born in Bethlehem. So the wise persons set out for Bethlehem, and as they walked, they saw ahead of them the star as they had first seen it in the Far East. The wise persons followed the star until it stopped over the stable where the newborn child was lying in the cow's feeding trough. When the wise persons entered the stable and saw the new baby, they were overwhelmed with joy at this new life. They knelt down and they opened their bags and brought out special gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Why would all these people stand around for such a long time to admire a tiny new baby? There is only one reason that I can think of, because the birth of a child always brings hope for the future. And for the people who lived under oppressive Roman rule, all the while longing for liberation, the birth of a child must have been full of extra meaning. Will this be the child who leads us to freedom? Will this be the child who breaks our bonds of slavery and establishes a reign of peace and kindness? So it is in our world today, after all these hundreds of years. This year is a time of loneliness for many, of stress and turmoil and fear for many. 
as we recognize that we are facing uncertain and challenging, perhaps even dangerous times. For many black and brown and indigenous people, it is a time of both great hope and deep worry. In a world that sometimes seems hopeless and unsure, more unsure than it has felt in a long time, we still look with hope to the future. Every time a baby is born, we hope that this child will be one of the ones who leads us to a world of more justice, more peace, more kindness and compassion, and more courageous love. And every time we tell this Christmas story, however we tell it, it reminds us to follow the star of those things that matter most. The story reminds us to look for hope, to help those who need places to stay, to work for justice and freedom for all people. We, you and I, are the ones who can help make sure the world is a better place for all the babies that are born.